So, so far in our story, we have this idea that with constant acceleration, that tells us that the V, the velocity at any time, is whatever the velocity was at the initial start of the clock plus that acceleration times time. In other words, velocity just marches upward. So one second, two second, three seconds, you have one second worth of acceleration, two seconds worth of acceleration, and three seconds worth of acceleration, and those steps are all the same size. So we can keep doing this because now we can remember that the velocity was equal to the time rate of change of the position. And so we rewrite that as the change in the position is the integral, in other words, the sum of that velocity times all those little time steps. <clears throat> now what we did last time was we pulled the velocity out of the integral because it's constant, but well, we just showed that velocity isn't constant. So we have to be much more careful. And so using what we did um, before, we rewrite this as the integral of v naught plus a times t dt. And now we'll use what we um, adopted for our notation, that the time goes from zero to some time t. And now you just sort of turn the crank on calculus. So uh, that means that um, we have delta x, so I'll rewrite that as x minus x naught is equal to, and we can break that integral up into two parts, a v naught dt part and an at dt part. This now, the initial velocity is a constant, where the velocity up here was not a constant. So we pull that out of the integral, and we just get v naught times the integral of dt, which is just t, plus now I'm going to use my um, memory of how derivatives work. And remember, an integral is just an inverse derivative. So you could guess to yourself. You could say, I don't know, maybe it's a t squared. Maybe you're guessing to yourself. Well, if you take the derivative of that, you get 2 times a times t, which is almost what we had, but, well, not quite. The 2 has to go away. So we can stick a 1 half out in front. There's no fancy tricks, really, to integration. Um, it's really just guessing what it is and then checking by taking the derivative. I call that the guess and check method, but that's pretty much what integration is. So now we have another equation. We have that x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. So actually what we have here now are two important things. We have this important equation, the first kinematic equation, and this one, the second kinematic equation. And I'm not sure that everybody calls this one the first and that one the second, but these are the two really important ones um, that we have derived so far. Okay, so if you remember a lot about a geometry class, you might remember that this is actually um, something kind of important here. This is a parabola. If you don't remember a lot from a geometry class, that's okay. Let's go ahead and just draw out what it looks like. So we were drawing things like the acceleration as a function of time, that's constant acceleration. That's what we've been talking about. And then that means that the velocity as a function of time has to look something like this with some v naught um, initial velocity. Well, now we found the position. So let's just figure out what it has to be, right? So we start with some positive velocity and I just made these choices arbitrarily, but that means that you start at some x naught, and then it's going upward. Well, but then the velocity is increasing, and so it has to be going upward even more and even more and even more and even more until you end up with a curve that looks like this. So what we're left with now is some kind of chunk of a parabola where this initial position is x naught. Okay. That means, though, because I picked those pretty much arbitrarily, you could have maybe a parabola that looks like this, or you could have a parabola that looks like that, or even a parabola that looks like this. I mean, all of these are examples of, uh, of constant acceleration, and we'll do cases like this, and all of these are just different choices of the acceleration, the initial velocity, and the initial position.